What's going on everybody and welcome to a video on some of the current open source AI image and video editing neural network applications that you can play with right now. We've come a long way from just barely generating 25 by 25 pixel images of just human faces to generating highly detailed images of anything you can imagine to through using attention mechanisms and neural networks, being able to identify what's in the image as well as what's in the prompt and what in the image does that pertain to. And then furthermore, making edits to those images to now being able to do even more insane things today. The first thing that I wanted to show is something I've wanted to do since these neural networks, these diffuser models and generators have hit the scene, and that's essentially doodle to image. So for example, something everyone can obviously identify due to my exceptional doodle capabilities is R2D2. Of course, not all of you will be imbued with such artistic prowess such as me, uh, but you should be able to find that this works quite well. Anyone can use this right now for free via Hugging Face. I'll put links to all the apps that are shown in this video in the description under the link to the Neural Networks from Scratch book, which you should also probably check out. Another example might be more generic, like a bird, or even a Lamborghini. Keep in mind that this works mainly by assuming your doodle is of the edges of the object or objects that you're attempting to generate, so doing something like stick figures won't necessarily work so well. You mainly want to make sure that the exterior shape is about right, and then the network can essentially fill in the gaps, so to speak, since it's more meant to generate an image from edges. So you want to also make sure that if you're using the doodle, that you decrease the size of that canvas tooltip before you draw your thing. With drawing objects, it doesn't actually just need to be one thing either. For example, what is obviously a Porsche 911 car and a tree. <laughs> All this said, you can instead also just edit images rather than needing to doodle. So if you're just not as good as I am, for example. A few months ago, I covered Google's prompt to prompt research paper, which allowed you to make edits to a prompt and then subsequently make edits to the generated image from there. The problem here is to, at least my knowledge, this research at the time required you to use AI generation for the initial image that you were going to edit. And then also the stuff that you needed to do to the prompt was very finicky and much more specific than where we are now. But what this research did prove uh, was that these networks can also use attention to identify objects and regions in an image that pertain to tokens or words from the prompt in that image, which is what led the way to where we are right now. From here, it really wasn't long until multiple options came out for editing some pre-existing image, whether it's AI generated or not. For example, we can use ControlNet again to take some pre-existing image as an input, then filter it with edge detection, then supply a prompt of a change that we wish to make. I think this works really well for changing things like colors and styles of an image. Here we have an NVIDIA CEO signing some 4090 GPUs. We can actually take this image and considerably change the styling. So for example, we can make it a man with bleach blonde hair and aviators. Not bad. If you want a chance at winning one of those Jensen signed 4090 GPUs, then check out the description for a link to sign up to GTC, the virtual biannual GPU technology conference from NVIDIA, which in the more recent years has been heavily, heavily dominated by talks and demos of advances in AI in a massive variety of fields. I'm expecting this year to be quite a bit about AI imagery and GPT models, with definitely a few interesting talks that you won't want to miss out on, plus the awesome chance to win one of those signed 4090s, making signing up a no-brainer. Uh, you can also make sure that you're included in a chance to win that 4090 by signing up using the link to GTC in the description of this video. Often with image editing, you probably will also have an urge more so to change entire objects in the imagery rather than say changing something within some edges. And while you can do this with ControlNet, I find results to vary considerably. A much more reliable option that I've been playing with and have found is pix to pix Again, I'll put a link to this in the description for the Hugging Face pix to pix app that you can play with right now for free. The same thing with the Doodle 2 image, you can play with that for free. There is a queue that you have to wait on, and if you don't want to wait for the queue, you can duplicate it and then run it on like a hosted GPU, or you can even run these things locally if you have a powerful enough GPU. So for example, with pix to pix we can actually swap out my dog here for a bear. 
But wait, there's more. Where you can do photos, you can do video, since video is just a succession of photos called frames. At the moment, it feels like editing videos in this way is still fairly juvenile and not really totally usable in any real degree other than if you happen to like the artistic style that the sort of fingerprints of this method leaves. But that said, this is probably more like a glimpse into the very, very near future where frame to frame will be much more consistent and realistic. If you're interested in doing videos longer than five seconds, you can either just duplicate this space and then run it on one of their hosted GPUs, or you can also just download the app code. And then from there, you want to just edit that app.py to allow yourself to make longer videos. But then also, if you want, you can make a lot more customizations at that point. With all of these AI image and video editing tools becoming so widely available, free, and immensely powerful, a demand for research and results in the, in the realm of protecting personal or otherwise sensitive photos from being edited by bad actors using AI like this is going to be increasingly needed. Right now, it's still relatively obvious when photos of real scenes are generated by AI, especially if you know, that, know to look for it. But the rate of improvement here is so rapid that even I often get accused of things like my backgrounds in videos being fake or green screened. And people are increasingly unsure and people are increasingly using fake backgrounds and they are increasingly believable. And a whole lot more of AI editing is going to continue to improve at a rapid, rapid rate. And we'll eventually be at a point where it will be very, very difficult to be able to tell what is real or fake anymore. One interesting example I've seen for trying to combat bad actors using your imagery or videos uh, being edited is PhotoGuard. Essentially, you pass a photo through PhotoGuard and it applies a sort of filter to the image. And obviously, again, images or videos are just successions of images, so you could do this on an entire video, for example. This somewhat does degrade the overall quality of the image, and I do wonder if there's a less intrusive way to protect imagery, but beggars can't be choosers, and this is the first and the best uh, that we have for now. I actually don't know if this is the first, but it's, 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 it's decent. It gets the job done. Uh, and I think it's more of like a proof of concept than anything else. It's definitely, at the very least, a step in the right direction and somewhere I think much more work needs to be done. Also, as noted by the creators of PhotoGuard, one could obviously easily train a new AI image generation model to not only just generate images in general, but to also handle for specifically photo guarded images because you could just generate lots of photo guard examples and then go from there. So. Uh, it would have to be a bit of an arms race and a cat and mouse game going forward, but this is very similar to many other security related things like firewalls and malware detection and, and all that stuff like antiviruses. Uh, but I can, I can really see a future where there will likely be entire companies that are formed that their sole purpose is to protect people's shared images and videos online using algorithms like this. It will be hard going forward because eventually there will probably be things that can beat those algorithms. And then once that photo is out there and exists, uh, people can probably get around it at some point. But this is definitely going to be a very open problem going forward. And this will be definitely something that many people are going to want to be able to use um, so it's definitely a, an important field. <laughs> you can play around with PhotoGuard on Hugging Face today. And if this is an area of research that interests you, then I, I definitely uh, suggest that you check it out. You don't even really need the algorithm that protects the images. That doesn't even have to be a neural network. It could be a far more basic and lightweight model or even just algorithm uh, that could instead attempt to maybe manipulate the mechanisms for how generative models work. But it could also be a neural network as well, or you could use a neural network to kind of derive that algorithm. If you're interested in checking out GTC and potentially winning a Jensen Sign 4090 GPU, make sure to check out the description for a sign-up link to the GTC. It's an all-digital event with tons of talks and topics in the field of AI and GPU technology, and it's definitely worth checking out. Just keep in mind, again, that if you do sign up, you want to sign up using my link below uh, for a chance for that 4090, as well as you will need to attend at least one session to be eligible. That's all for now. I can't wait to see what comes next in the AI photo and video editing space and also just video generation. I can't wait to get, to get my hands on some of the more open source models for just video generation. So prompt to video. Um, the other thing I'm super curious about seeing hopefully sometime in this year is much more robust 
prompt to 3D kind of scenes and objects and all that. So stay tuned for those. I think I, I strongly think we'll be seeing some cool ones in 2023. So uh, stay tuned for that. And I will see you all in another video.